Hi, welcome to Naresh IT. This is Kishore and today we are going to discuss about how to use the arrays inside the class. We know that class is the combination of data members and member functions and at the same time class allows to declare both the primitive and derived data type at one place. Class is the combination of both the primitive and derived data type. Now, in this session, I am going to cover how to declare the array inside the class. Actually, you know that array is a derived data type. That means, I want to explain how to use the derived data type array inside the class. Okay. First of all, what is an array? Array is nothing but collection of homogeneous variables. When individual variables, for example, for example, one student is having six subject marks. Generally, we have to declare six variables for that. Later, we have to input six values and later we have to input scene means we have to use six variables and we have to go for scene also for six times or we have to separate with the extraction operator six times. Now, it is getting lengthy and we have to remember all the variable names. To avoid this problem, the only simple solution is array because of array allows to define several variables of same type under one name. That means, instead of declaring six subjects, now I am going to define one array type variable. Okay? When it is array type variable, it is able to store all the six values at one place under one name and uh, we have to use the scene also in a loop. That is why program length also reduced and here we have to remember only one variable name. That is why program performance also increased. Now, I am going to explain how to use array inside the class and here iostream.h for standard input output operations. Next, hash include conio.h for clrscr and get ch functions. Next, now this header file is for standard input output operations means c out and c in and conio.h is for clrscr and get ch functions. Now, I am going to start a class, class student. I am going to take the class student and uh, the data members are int id, student name and uh, subject marks and here I want to store six subjects. Then generally we have to declare six variables. Instead of that, I am going to declare array subject of six. Now, here we can store the student id, here name and here six subject marks. Okay. Next, I want to enter the data for this members. That is why void get student one function and void result one function. Okay. Here I am going to use two functions, member functions. One is get student for input process and to show the result, void result. Next, now I am going to close the class. Now, the class declaration completed and I have to define the member functions. Now, I want to define the member functions outside the class. When we are defining a member function outside the class, we have to start with class name and scope operator. That is why here I am going to start the definition void first written type. Next, get student is the member function of student class. That is why student class name and scope operator later function name get student here i want to input the data next see out enter student id comma name next see in id and name now by using this one we are entering the id value and the name now two values are stored later we have to store the subject wise marks Okay, we have to find out the subject means we have to input the subject wise marks and here how many subjects are there? 6 subjects are there. That is why here I am going to write like this. See out enter 6 subject marks and here 
when it is 6 subject marks it is better to go for a loop that is why I am going to start a for loop for i n t i equal to 0. In C++ we are having this facility we can declare the variables at any place that is why I am going to declare a local variable inside the for loop next i less than 6 why because 6 objects we are having next i plus plus now this loop is going to repeat 6 times from 0 to 5 later c in c in subject of i that is all now what happened c in is going to read the value for subject of i i value started with 0 subject of 0 later subject of 1 2 3 4 5 now 6 values are going to be stored now the loop closed and function also closed when this function is called what happens first of all it is reading the student id later student name later it is reading 6 subject marks now all the subject wise marks are going to be stored now i want to find out the student result i want to find out the student result that is why what i am doing here see this void and this one also member of student class now that is why student colon colon and function name is what result now result ok here I want to find out first of all student total that is why int total local variable equal to I want to find out what 6 subjects addition now I have to use 6 subjects now 6 subjects are declared as array now that is why here I am going to write once again see this int total float average now total is initialized with 0 means local variables one is total one is average later I want to find out the total that is why once again for int i equal to 0 i less than 6 i plus plus and here I am going to find out total total plus c equal to a subject of i now subject of i actually meaning is what now total equal to total plus subject of i ok and now what happened total total starting value 0 0 plus subject of i i value 0 subject of 0 means first subject for example it is the id just assume it is the name and here subjects 0 1 2 3 4 5 now it is having some values like this ok now here some id is stored means uh, id number 1 ram or rama now suppose it is the object which object ok s object for example we are going to declare a s object and now what happened watch it total actually total is what 0 0 plus subject of 0 means 40 later 40 plus 50 later 90 plus 52 like that how many times it is repeated 5 times means 6 times 0 to 5 6 times finish it. now it is finding the total later average average equal to total by 6.0 why because total is a integer variable 6 also integer variable and integer by integer always gives another integer value for that I am going for integer by float because of integer by float uh, always gives another float that is why to get the accurate value we have to divide with floating value or type casting required in place of type casting directly I am going to use float next now total available here average also available now I want to print total average and student pass or fail that is why first I am going to write like this C out first total T O T and L now total printed and next C out average average also printed next now I want to find out the result means pass or fail ok for that here how many subjects are there 6 subjects generally based on the average we are giving the result means uh, suppose 60 percent 
greater than or equal to 60 first class, greater than or equal to 50 second class, greater than or equal to 35 third class, below that fail. But here the point is, suppose one student aggregate is 80 percent, but one subject is failed, then for example, then it shows first class. That is why to avoid this problem, first uh, check all the subject wise marks, okay? first check all the subject wise marks, then go for aggregate. That is why here I am going to check the condition if okay. here I am going to write like this if already here average printed here result printed if subject of I and here how many subjects are there 6 subjects are there total 6 subjects are there that is why to check the 6 subjects we have to write subject of 0 subject of 1 subject of 2 6 times now to avoid this one once again better to go for int ok here i value i am going to take i value started with 0 i less than 6 i plus plus now what happens this for loop is going to repeat 6 times now subject of i i value means 0 0 means this one no? 0 means greater than or less than ok suppose less than 35 minimum marks 35 for subject that is why if subject of i subject of 0 means 40 40 less than 35 condition false no problem suppose here i have entered like this 30 second subject now 30 less than 35 true when it is true simply i am saying c out fail now this fail is going to print uh, after the result because of cursor is waiting after the result no? that is why that student result is fail. Okay. Now, one subject is failed in any number of subjects suppose one subject fail means total fail that means any number of subject fail means also fail no? that is why remaining checkings are not required further checkings are not required that is why I am going to do one small thing here simply I am going to do one thing that is nothing but go to last that means I am going to use the go to label I am going to use the go to label for example it is the last now here something is get ch like this ok program close now what happens when the subject wise marks are less than 35 means in any subject he is getting he or she is getting 35 or less than 35 then automatically c out fail let us go to last program jump out to here after that gets h means process completed otherwise ok. Suppose here student is having 70 now see this 0 subject 40 40 less than 35 false 70 less than 35 52 less than 35 65 less than 35 85 less than 35 71 less than that means no condition that means all the conditions are false that is why directly comes to here and it says pass. Now, the pass is going to print here now that is why the student result is pass ok. That is why if in any subject he is getting less than 35 it shows fail and later checking is not required that is why go to last, last is having get stage program stopped. Suppose if this condition falls means what in all subjects student passed when all subjects are passed it is going to print directly c out pass later get ch program stopped now it is how to find out the student total average and result okay and now this function also completed here result function also completed later we have to call this program now that means we have to invoke the member functions that is why first we have to declare the object when object is there we have to go for main function that is why here I am going to start main function ok see this void main now main is declared later stus now s is the object when object is created memory allocated like this 2 bytes 20 bytes and here 12 bytes 6 integers now that is why 2 bytes here 20 bytes here and 12 bytes that is why 32 plus 2 34 bytes memory allocated for this array means this object ok fine 
later we have to call the member functions s dot first member function get student okay when s dot get student means this function it is going to read the student id name and six subject marks that means now the six subject marks are stored inside the object later we have to show the result now s dot result when s dot result is called this function is invoked now total first of all it is going to find out the total later average they are going to print at last result based on subject now total result also completed when it is completed i am going to close the class because of already here one get ch is there here already get ch is there it is going to stop the program now it is going to show the student result it is how to use arrays inside the class due to this what is the advantage means program size is reduced okay thank you for watching